Hello everyone, I am Ahmad Nasruddin and I will be presenting our work in anti-money laundering alert optimization using machine learning with graphs. This work was developed together with my co-authors Jacobo Bono, David Aparicio, David Bolido, João Ascensao, Pedro Pizarro and Pedro Ribeiro. I will start by introducing our work, then explain our method and results. After that, we'll present some follow-up work that we did and conclude. Our work tackles money laundering, which is the process of legitimizing the money resulting from serious crimes like drug dealing and human trafficking. Money laundering has a harmful effect on countries' economy and social well-being. Moreover, it causes huge fines and reputation damage for banks. To fight money laundering, financial institutions employ AML solutions to actively monitor and report any suspicious activity. These traditional AML solutions are usually rule-based, where uh, a set of rules will monitor the transactions, and once a rule is triggered, for instance, because high amounts are being transferred, then the generated alert is sent to human analysts that will classify this alert as actual suspicious or as false positive. Although those systems provide explainability on why a certain alert was raised, they are human intensive, demanding specialized human reviewers to perform complex and time consuming reviews. Moreover, they result in high false positive rates, which could be more than 95% of the overall alerts, resulting in a lot of inefficiency. To address the high false positive rates, we propose a machine learning based triage model that is positioned after the rules in the pipeline with the objective of assigning a score of how suspicious a certain alert is. This score can later be used for prioritizing alerts or hibernating false positives. This way, we keep the explainability advantage of the rules, and on top of that, we add white box explanations of the predicted score. To train this model, we use entity-based profiles to extract information about the alerted entity in the form of aggregations over various time windows, like the sum amount received in the past month. Also, and since money laundering is mainly about the flow of money, we extract neighborhood information in the form of graph-based features. Examples of the graph-based features that we use to enrich our data include degrees, which could help us capture the topology and the size of the neighborhood. As you can see in this toy example, given a target node C, we, we calculate its in degree, representing the number of different entities that send money to C and its out degree, meaning to how many different entities does C send money to. Moreover, we go more than one hop away and calculate features like the average in degree of the neighbor's predecessors or successors of C. Another set of graph-based features that we use is our previous work in Guilty Walker, which captures the distance to non-illicit nodes. So, given a toy entity graph like this, or where our objective is to predict a score for the node A, in this graph, red nodes represent entities that had previously been involved in suspicious activity, and green nodes are legitimate entities, and in blue, we have the nodes that we don't have a true label for yet, due to label delay. So to address label delay, we assign a pseudo label for the blue nodes using the score of a machine learning classifier that leverages only the entities, uh, the entity profiles in this case. And to calculate the guilty walker features of our target node A, we perform a set of random walks starting from A that go both directions with the flow of money and against the flow of money, but always traversing edges that are older than the current one. After that, we summarize these walks to bear in, of, uh, in the form of graph features, like the hit rate, which is the percentage of the random walks that ended in a suspicious node, the number of distinct illicit nodes that were encountered, and the average distance to illicit nodes. So to recap, 
given is transactional data, we calculate entity-based profiles and graph-based features, concatenate both, and train a light GBM classifier that will assign a risk score per alert. We evaluate our model using real-world banking data. We don't show the full row curve due to privacy reasons. However, in this show figure, we show the improvements that our graph-based features add on top of the entity profiles. So Y0 is the rock curve of a model that is trained only on profiles. And here we can see the improvements that the graph-based features add. So we are interested in the low false positive rates in order to review the minimum possible number of alerts while capturing the maximum possible true positives. So our results showed that at 20% FPR, we could capture around 95% of the true positives. On top of the promising results, we used tree shape and semantic grouping of features to provide white box explanations of our predicted scores. Please note that this work, uh, this, this was a follow-up work that was not included in the original paper. This is an example of an alert that our model assigns a high uh, probability of being suspicious uh, and the semantic group, semantically grouped explanations show that the reason of the high score was that the proximity to illicit nodes, the amounts of money that was being sent and the size of the neighborhood. If, and if the reviewer wants to see the exact features and their values by clicking on the plus sign they would see the exact values behind the score. And towards building a resilient model, we propose a continuous performing strategy that provides the ability to choose some of the low scores and send them to, uh, to be reviewed in order to make sure that we are aware of any performance degradation. Moreover, our solution is versatile. And, since there is, and that's because the result is a score, which provides us the flexibility to either use this, this score to prioritize alerts or to hibernate false positives, or to organize alerts in different queues based on the seniority of the analyst, the analysts being reviewing them. Also, it allows adding new rules to the rule system, where uh, we propose that all the alerts generated by the new rules will be reviewed until we accumulate enough data to retrain our model. So, to sum up, we, pro we propose a versatile alert optimization solution to improve the efficiency of existing AML solutions. Our results show that we could capture more than 90% of the true positives by reviewing five times less alerts we show that graph-based features play an essential role. And to complement our results, we provide white box explanations and continuous performance monitoring strategy. Thank you.